Pour a little honey. Breakfast cereal. Breakfast cereal is the first thing I eat. Crunchy for your lunchy, it's a milky delight. Everybody. Hello children, I'm Sam and welcome to today's online field trip. Um, today we're in Northamptonshire which is in the East Midlands. Now we are somewhere very exciting today because as you can see behind me we have a huge mountain and this mountain is made of wheat grain. Now the reason why we're here is to learn all about wheat grain and how it's made into breakfast cereal. Very exciting indeed. This is our guide for today. This is Charles. Hello, Charles. Hello, children. Thank you so much for having us here. Now, Charles is in charge of this uh, grain store and you, you live here with your family, don't you? And work here with your family. Um, maybe you can tell us how much grain is behind us because this is a massive mountain. Behind us here, we have a, a heap of 1,500 tonnes of a wheat variety called Target, which is a good variety for turning into breakfast cereal. Wow, that is a lot. I mean, that is very, very heavy indeed. <laughs> very heavy indeed. It makes me want to slide down. It's so inviting. <laughs> what will we be learning today while we're here, Charles? Well, hopefully today we're going to tell you what happens to the grain when it leaves the farm and it comes into here and how we process it and grade it out so the very best grains go on to the breakfast cereal factory to make good quality breakfast cereals. Great stuff. So the whole process, really, it's really exciting. Let's find out who we have joining us on today's online field trip. Let's go over to our schools. Our first school is the Avenue Primary School, and they're in Middlesbrough, and it's Mr. Kelly's class taking part today. Hello, children. Hello. Great stuff. Let's go over to our next school. That's Cloverhill Primary School in Newcastle where we have Mrs. Rogerson's class taking part today. <laughs> Let's go over to Spratton Hall Primary School now in Northampton, where we have Mr. White's class taking part. Hey, children. <laughs> nice and loud there. And finally, let's go to Preston Green Primary in Kent, where Mrs. Crowhurst's class is taking part. Hello, children. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. It's really great to have you all watching and learning with us today. I have to say, Spratton Hall Primary, there's a certain gentleman not too far away from me who used to go to that very same school. And your, your children went there as well, Charles, didn't they? We've had some very happy days at Spratton Hall. That's fantastic stuff. So really great to have you taking part. It's really going to be an exciting field trip. I think first of all, we should start off by learning a little bit more about our host. So Charles, how long have you and your family been here at this store? Uh, we've been in business for uh, 30 years. Um, our business is based around working with farmers and buying all crops from them. Um, we're very busy at harvest time. We take a lot of grain in then, and if necessary, we'll dry it and we'll store it safely so that throughout the whole year we can supply that wheat and other products onto, onto the breakfast of seal factories. Fantastic. Is it one type of wheat that you store here or is it lots of type of wheat? We have lots of types of wheats. There are many, many, many different types of wheat and they all um, perform differently when they um, are often cooked in, in breakfast seal factories. So it's very important that we work with farmers to grow the right sort of wheat to make the best products for our customers. Great. So this wheat behind us, this huge mountain, is target wheat. And why is this such a good wheat for making breakfast cereal? Well, it's, it's, it's got a nice flowery middle to it. It's got a good soft end, endosperm and it performs consistently and cook, uh, well. And the biscuits all hold together nicely when they're cooked. So it's a science and art, really, isn't it? So, yes. <laughs> I'd like to find out a little bit more about how wheat grows. So can you, you tell us about the best conditions for growing wheat? Well, we're, we're very lucky in this part of the country. Um, what, you, what you want to grow a crop is to have moisture, to have soil, um, decent soil and uh, um, nice sunshine. And um, having a combination of the three, and then you have some good farmers, you're able to grow good crops. Fantastic. And I have, as if by magic, a lovely wheat sheaf here. It's very pretty, isn't it? So at what point would wheat look like this? This is wheat when it's ready for harvesting, oh, okay. which is um, 
in August and September. If you have a look at that, you have an ear on one end and a straw, and inside the ear there's probably 20 different uh, grains all, all attached. And it's very important that that can be harvested when it's just ripe, which is normally for about a week or 10 days. Okay, and I, I found out something really interesting this week. I found out that um, some farmers actually bite into the wheat to make sure it's uh, ready for, to be harvested, just to, to give it a last minute check. And when you're doing it now, I was gonna say, do you do it? So what are you looking for when you bite into the wheat, Charles? If you crunch the grain, bite the grain, mm. and you can hear a crunch, that means it's dry enough to put the combine harvester into the field. Fantastic. So do you have other ways to do that or is that just do, do all farmers go around having a little, uh, we, little bite of, <laughs> of we, wheat? We, we have lots of very um, technical machines to test it, but the, the, the teeth test is as good as any. You have to just be careful not to break your teeth. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, obviously, children, Charles is uh, an expert, um, all of, you know, knowing all about wheat. But I do know, Charles, that we do have some budding wheat experts out there because we have some information and resources online all about wheat and ha how it's made into breakfast cereal. And I know some of you have been using that too learn all about wheat already so I think we should put that to the test um, let's go over to the Avenue Primary School now and find out what Mr Kelly's class has learned this week all about wheat so do we have some children who would like to tell us some of the things they've learned there uh, Mr Kelly we certainly do Joe are you ready yeah Joe, what are your facts Joe there are six classes of wheat hard red spring soft white hard red winter soft red winter Durham, hard and hard white. Wow, amazing. So that class has learned a lot about a lot about wheat, Good. especially the young boy there. There are six classes of wheat. Uh, there's hard red spring, soft white, hard red winter, soft red winter, Durham and hard white. Wheats are grown all over the globe and we have many different types of wheat, as you've just heard. In the UK, we're predominantly the soft white wheats. Okay, great. Well, you, a, lot, a lot of uh, knowledge that's already uh, uh, been learned there. Let's get another fact. Let's go back over to the Avenue Primary School. Yeah. One acre of wheat can produce enough wheat to feed your family with bread for nearly 10 years. That's a really fascinating fact. So one acre of wheat can provide enough wheat to make enough bread to feed a family for 10 years. That's a lot of food. <laughs> That's a lot of bread, a isn't lot it? Of bread. <laughs> and a lot of wheat. Well done, Avenue Primary School. You've obviously been paying a lot of attention and learning lots from all the resources that you found online. And um, we're going to be learning how to make simple wheat biscuits later on in this online field trip. Um, but there are lots of other cereals, aren't there, Charles, that are made from wheat. And we do have some here, which is very important. <laughs> we, we, we provide a wheat product like that that goes to the factories and then they can turn it into lots of different types of breakfast cereals all with different cooking processes and toasting processes and um, they all um, healthy, interesting products. Fantastic. I think a lot of the children can recognise these and, and have them most mornings. And you probably recognise them like this because these are all the colourful packages that they all come in. And um, children, it is really important to remember as well that uh, most cereals have sugar and salt added to them to help them taste better. Um, and there are quite a few cereals that do have a lot of sugar added as well. So it's really important to pay attention to the front cover of the box where you can see all the nutritional values there. So that you know what you are eating and when you're choosing something at the supermarket as well with your family but all the ones that we have here are either low or medium in sugar so these are these are quite good ones to to, to choose um, okay we're learning so much already uh, Charles I think we should give the children an opportunity to ask you a few questions so let's go back over to the Avenue primary school now and um, let's get some questions from Mr Kelly's class has the extreme weather of recent years affected your crop production? That's a really interesting uh, question. So Charles, has the extreme weather over recent years affected your, uh, the, 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 the wheat crops? Climate change is obviously having some big impact. Where we are in England and Northern Europe, in many ways, it's, it's helping crop production because we are having more rainfall, which is essential toward, towards um, production producing good quality crops. Fantastic. I'll remember that next time I look out and I'm, I moan about the rain. So children, it is important that we do have lots of rain. 
very important. It makes Charles happy. <laughs> That's a really great question. Let's get another question from the Avenue Primary School. If your crops are not growing well, what do you do? That's a really good question. So, Charles, what do you do if your crops aren't growing that well? Well, if you plant them in the autumn and they don't grow, you can plant them again in the spring. However, a good farmer will know if his crop's doing well and he can feed it and, and kill off the weeds and he can help um, make the crop grow better. But there's a lot of skill in growing a good crop. Right. So I guess it's a, a bit like having a plant at home and you have to make, like, water it and make sure it's, it's got everything it needs to grow. It, it needs looking after. Fantastic. Great questions. Let's go over to Clover Hill Primary School now to see if we have any questions from Mrs. Rogerson's class. How are the greens not lost when the wheat is cut? That's a really good question. So how do you make sure that the grains aren't lost when the wheat is cut, uh, Charles? Well, that comes down to the farmer. When he goes through with his combine harvester, he has to make sure it's set and he doesn't go too fast and he keeps it inside the tank so he can load the trailers. If he goes too fast, it will go over the back end of the combine. It's an art to that as well then. Um, can you get one more question from uh, Mrs. Rogerson's class? How do you turn the grains into different cereal shapes? Oh, that's a really great question. So, Charles, how are the grains turned into the different cereal shapes that we get in our packets? Well, each, each factory has its own method. It, it cooks the grain entire, and, and then it will mould them and shred them and form them into lots of different shapes and compact them. Makes it nice and exciting for us, doesn't it, when we have our breakfast? <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Charles, and great questions, children. Um, don't worry, Spratton Hall Primary and Preston Green Primary, there'll be an opportunity for you to ask Charles some questions later on in this online field trip. But now it's time for a really short video. This is all about wheat, how it's grown and how it's harvested. Enjoy. What is whole grain breakfast cereal? Breakfast cereal was invented as a tasty meal in the United States of America around 150 years ago. It was a new way of getting the people of America to eat more fibre, helping them to stay fit and healthy. Breakfast cereals today can be made from all sorts of grains like barley, oat and rice. But many are made from one very important crop, wheat. Whole grain wheat is good for us because it releases its energy slowly and steadily. This is why we use it in lots of different foods that we eat. When we eat the whole grain, we eat the entire seed of the plant. It is made up of the bran, the germ and the endosperm. The bran is the protective outer skin of the seed and is high in fibre and B vitamins. The germ is the embryo. This will become a new plant if the seed is germinated. The endosperm, which is the largest part of the seed, contains all the food that the germ would need to start growing into a new plant. Each year the farmer keeps some of the wheat grains he produces to plant his new crop. The planting usually takes place in October, when the soil is still warm from the summer, but moist from the autumn rain. These conditions give the wheat all it needs to grow strong and healthy. Throughout spring, the warm sunshine encourages the plants to grow. The farmer leaves the wheat in the fields for around 10 months until August. When it's fully grown, it can reach a height of up to one metre tall. Once it has turned from green to golden, the farmer knows the wheat is finally ready for harvest. To harvest the wheat, the farmer uses a special machine called a combine harvester. The combine harvester cuts and gathers the wheat, as well as separating the protective casings, called the chaff, from the edible grains. On a good year, the farmer can harvest up to 570 tonnes of wheat, which is heavier than three blue whales the largest animal ever known to have lived on planet Earth. Once all the wheat has been harvested, the farmer takes the grain to the grain store, ready for the next stage of its journey towards becoming a tasty breakfast cereal. 
Welcome back, children. As you can see, we're here at a very exciting time because the lorry has just come along and tipped its load of wheat inside this amazing contraption. Charles, what is this? Well, this is where the lorries tip off into a big pit. And then the pit, with the means of a mechanical conveyor and elevators, a bit like an escalator, will take the grain up to the top of the silo and we will tip another two loads on top of that one load and then we'll later on today be able to turn the three loads into breakfast cereal wheat. Fantastic and as I can see it's just slipping down a, a big hole. A little bit like quicksand. It's, you, <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to stand on top of there. No. That's why we have the grill. Okay. Fantastic. And so that was one lorry. How many lorries would you have here per, per day? Well, normally this time of year, we'll be taking sort of 15 loads a day in. Um, but at harvest time in August, in July and August, we get really busy. We'll go up to 120, 130 vehicles a day. That is a lot of lorries. And I can see there's one waiting. So should we let the lorry come and put its load in here? I think we need to get out of the okay, way. OK, let's get out of the way. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so this lorry is a, like, massive, isn't it, Charles? How, many, how much wheat would you have in there? Uh, that'll hold 29 tonnes of wheat. And to, to, that would be grown on an area um, the size of the three football pitches. So three football pitches of wheat growing would condense into this lorry. That's absolutely amazing. So how much breakfast cereal could you make out of the wheat that's inside this I, lorry? You can make 40,000 boxes of breakfast cereal out of one lorry load of grain. That's a lot of breakfast cereal. <laughs> it's a lot of breakfast cereal. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so I can see the lorry tipped itself up. And does the wheat automatically come all out of the bottom, sort of shooting into the... It flows by gravity until it's completely emptied out, yes. Fantastic, OK. And so how many lorries could you take per day and how much storage do you have for this wheat? Well, we have lots of different sorts of wheats, but we, we, we can go up to 30, 40 loads a day if we're really busy. But um, this time of year, all the wheat has been gathered in, it's in the store. It's a harvest time, which is the biggest thing, when you have to get grain off the fields and into store that we have many more vehicles. Fantastic. And so, by the looks of it, this is just wheat that has been harvested. It hasn't been cleaned. It hasn't gone through any process. No, this is wheat that's been grown on a farm and it's been stored on a farm. It would have been either dried on a farm or it could have been cut dry, of course. And now it's, we've been out, we've tested it while it's on the farm. We've established it's good quality wheat and it's come in over our Weybridge, and then we test it in our laboratory to make sure it's just the right quality that we need for our breakfast cereal customers. So I guess the next process is to make sure there's nothing in there that shouldn't be in there. That's quite a big job, but yes. Can we go and see that? Let me go and show you. Go on, then I'll you. follow you. me then, please? Jason? Great, I can see all the lorries, they're all queuing up very patiently to bring the wheat in and uh, Pop it into here, which is called a silo, isn't it, uh, Charles? Would you mind washing your hands, please? No, I'll wash my hands. Oh, and I understand I've got to put a hairnet on as well for safety and make sure that I don't get any hair in the wheat, so I'll do that as well. Very important. We're now going to a food factory and yep. we have to make sure it's as all clean as possible. Your hat suits you, Charles. Thank very you nice very indeed. Very fetching, isn't it? Okay, let's go on through. So now we've got all the gear on. What do we have here then? Right, when we bring in grain, it looks a bit like that. As you can see, you have other bits in there than the best grain. <coughs> and we take off material like these different fractions, weed seeds, sharp, unthrashed ears. Now this is really quite surprising, the amount of stones that actually come in with the field. And you wouldn't want any of your breakfast cereal, would you? I wouldn't want it, yeah, you'd break your teeth if you had those in your you cereal. Would indeed. And then, of course, there's always dust, and the dust needs to be cleaned out as well. And then we end up with a, a really clean sample of wheat, which is good enough to go to the breakfast cereal factory. So that's the finished product once it's been through the whole process inside here, inside the silo. That's right, yes. Now, I understand that this machine here is very important. Yeah, this is the hub of the control system where all the electrics work for. The operators have to press all the buttons there to, to start the whole plant up. So how many machines do you have in here? It's very, very loud, children. <laughs> I think we've got about 30 different machines in here. 
all of which are doing different sort of functions to the grain to, to try and take the very best of the grains out. Brilliant, you know what? I'd absolutely love to see it happening up there. So can we go up and see the machine? Please go. I'll Fantastic. show you around there. Let's go on up. Can you go up? Can you just flip that over the rail? Okay, so it's very, very loud. Um, this machine looks interesting. It's kind of vibrating. This is shaking the grain out into a layer. So we, it can be spread across the sieve to make good separ separation. You come around the corner, we'll see what it's taking off. Okay. On this machine, we have five screens and two sets of air where they blast off. Here you can see we have light grain and char, which are separated. And here we have small grains and any weed seeds that are separated as well. Oh wow, so this is where all the wheat has been. This is where we do all, all, all the sorting out and all the grading. Fantastic stuff. So once this whole process is done, the wheat is ready to go and be made into breakfast cereal. Yes, it is. Fantastic. How interesting is that, children? Okay, so we found out what happens to the wheat when it arrives here from the farm, how this machine makes it ready to go off to be made into breakfast cereal. So let's find out the last stage of the process and let's see those delicious wheat biscuits being made. How are wheat biscuits made? The wheat grains arrive at the breakfast cereal factory from the grain store, ready to be made into tasty wheat biscuits. The grains are transferred from the lorry to the silos through a tube like this. The silos are large containers where the grains are stored, while a sample is taken away and checked for quality. Any that aren't good enough for us to eat don't go to waste. They are taken away and made into animal feed. Next, they mix together all the other ingredients for the wheat biscuits. Sugar, salt, water, and barley malt extract. Barley malt extract is a kind of syrup that comes from barley and gives the wheat biscuits a nice flavour. Vitamins and iron are also added to make them more nutritious. Once everything is thoroughly mixed, the ingredients are poured into a cooker. The cooker steams the mixture for nearly one hour. This process allows the wheat grains to soak up all the other ingredients, improving the flavour and changing the colour to dark brown. Next, the cooked wheat grains are cooled down. Once all the mixture is cooled, the grains are ready for the next stage, milling. The mill has two huge cylinders that are very close together. As the grains are pushed through the machine, they are squashed flat into flakes like these. The flakes that come out of the mill are light brown in colour because the dark outer grain has mixed with the whiter inside. The light brown wheat flakes make their way into this moulding machine where they are pressed together into rectangular shapes. These shapes are now ready to be cooked once more at over 100 degrees Celsius until they become golden and toasty wheat biscuits. Once cooked, the fresh wheat biscuits are cooled. They are then checked one last time by this machine for quality before being wrapped and packed. Boxes of wheat biscuits are packed onto a lorry like this one and then taken to your local store, ready to be bought and then eaten for your breakfast. Oh, 
welcome back. It's surprising how much work goes into making one of these simple wheat biscuits. Okay, so so far we've learned all about wheat, how it grows, how it's harvested, what happens here at the grain store and how it's made into wheat biscuits. We've learned so much, Charles. I think it's time for some more questions for you. Uh, so let's go to Spratton Hall Primary School to see if Mr White's class have any questions for Charles. What is your favourite cereal? Oh, what's your favourite cereal, Charles? Well, I might be biased, but I, but, but I do like to have one of these, or some of the, two of these at least, on cold milk before I go to work in the morning. Oh, I like warm milk. Oh, well, we oh, I love I love warm milk. It sets me up for a day, especially when it's cold like this. It's quite chilly today, so I don't like to have cold milk. <laughs> uh, great questions. Let's go to Preston Green Primary now, and let's get some questions from Mrs. Crowhurst's class. How much wheat is grown in your field? That's a really good question. Um, Charles, how much wheat grows in your field? Now, I know you haven't got any fields, have you? So, the farmer's fields around here. People would hope to get 10 tonnes a hectare. Um, some fields are small, some are big, but most fields, I would say, you'd probably hope to get 200 tonnes, 10 lorry loads from. 10 lorry loads, that's a lot, a lot. You can make a lot of breakfast cereal out of that. I learned that today, Charles. <laughs> Great question. Let's get one last question from Mrs. Crowhurst's class. Why does yeast smell so strong? That's a really good question. I've never thought about this. So why does yeast smell so strong, Charles? Well, yeast is actually a living microorganism and the smell that you can actually smell is natural gases that it's giving off all the time. Oh, so it's gas. It's not just the, the smell of the thing itself. It's what's coming out, it's coming off it. Fantastic, great questions, children. Some really good questions for Charles today. Now, Charles, in the last video, we saw wheat biscuits being made and it wasn't just wheat going into the mixture. There was lots of other things, lots of other ingredients. And we do have some of them here, don't we? Could you talk us through some of the things that go to make a, a wheat biscuit? Well, obviously, the, the most important part is wheat. And then they need a lot of water to do the cooking with. We have to have some salt and some sugar. And not always, but sometimes uh, malt extract. And all those are mixed and cooked and they add some vitamins um, in a breakfast cereal to fortify them. Do a lot of breakfast cereals, or do all cereals have vitamins added to them? Because you see it on a lot of the boxes, don't you? Yes, they all do virtually, yes. Fantastic, lovely. And of course, children, remember that breakfast cereal isn't just tasty, it's good for you too. It's a high source of folic acid, which will keep your immune system nice and healthy, and a high source of iron as well, which keeps your red blood cells nice and healthy too. And it's a good source of fiber, which is good for a healthy gut. Okay, we've come to the end of this online field trip almost. There's just enough time to find out what you've learned. So let's go over to Avenue Primary first and find out what you've learned. A global wheat family will be the best that only a few nations could survive for only a year. A global wheat failure would be a disaster that only a few nations could survive for only one year. So I think they, I think they said that it would be a disaster if all the wheat didn't grow around the world. Everybody would be very hungry. Yes, very important. <laughs> very important. Fantastic. Let's go to Clover Hill Primary School now and see um, what Mrs. Rogerson's class have learned today. Now I know how the cereal gets my ball from the sea, from the fields. Fantastic. So they know, now know how cereal is made from wheat on the field. You've seen it all today, and hopefully you enjoy eating them. <laughs> we will, Charles. Uh, great stuff. Let's go up to Spratton Hall Primary and find out what Mr. White's class has learned today. Cereal was invented in the USA. Great stuff. So cereal was invented in the USA, breakfast cereal. Indeed it was. Um, it started off um, oh, back in the 1800s as a small business and then it's developed and developed and developed and growing and growing and growing. Who'd have thought, hey, back, back then? That's a great fact. Um, let's go over to Preston Green Primary now and find out what you've learned. Because um, cereal doesn't only have to be eaten in the... Um, at breakfast time, it can be eaten at any time. That's great. So cereal doesn't have to be eaten in the morning, it can be eaten any time, Charles. All time. It's nice to have some before you go to bed as well. 
Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Uh, great learning, children. You've obviously been paying lots of attention and, and um, enjoyed learning all about wheat and breakfast cereal. Um, so, Charles, one last question for you. What's the best thing about working with grain and wheat? I really like the product and I really like dealing with farmers and, and being involved in the open air. It's a really nice place to be to earn a living. And we really love eating breakfast cereal as well, so keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching and learning with us, children. We really hope you've had fun learning all about breakfast cereal today. If you'd like to take part in our next online field trip, you can catch us. We'll be in Penzance learning all about beef on Thursday, the 12th of March. Everything you need to know about that is on the website. And if you'd like to take part in a uh, farm to fork field trip, um, um, which is with your school, then all the details that you uh, need is online now. It really is lots and lots of fun. Look at the children on screen right now, just really enjoying themselves. So it is really worth registering. But from myself and Charles here in the East Midlands, it's goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, the Avenue Primary School. <laughs> Goodbye, Clover Hill Primary. Goodbye, Spratton Hall Primary. <laughs> Goodbye, Preston Green Primary. Goodbye.